All right, so I just wanted to walk through a process I built here using Power Automate. Uh, essentially, I was building an application where users could select a uh, faculty members at our university could select a new device uh, during their every three year renewal cycle or refresh cycle. Uh, so basically as part of that, uh, essentially I have a list of devices which are going to be rendered through an app built in Power Apps. And I wanted to, a way to incorporate images into that app, so images of that device. But there are a bunch of different ways to do this. Um, some other solutions would be put those images into an image library or a document library in SharePoint, get the URL, manually paste the URL into a column in this list. Because I knew I would be rendering those images through Power Apps, I wasn't worried about showing the image in this devices list. Uh, but I did want to make it easy for the folks who were going to be updating this devices list um, to update it. Uh, so essentially, rather than having them put the images in one place, create the device here, and then get a, a URL for the image and paste it into a field here, I wanted to make it as simple as possible. So essentially, I, what I did is set up a process whereby whenever something is added or create, uh, added or modified in this list, a Power Automate flow runs that will take any attachments, image attachments, so they have to be a JPEG or PNG file. Um, basically take the image attachment, copy it to or move that image to a document library in the site and then tag it with the ID number of the item of the device so that later in my app I can basically draw back a gallery of images for that particular device. Uh, this sometimes you only want one image, sometimes people would want multiple images, so that's why I built this to basically render through a gallery to make it a little bit easier. Um, or not easier but a little more flexible. It was definitely would have been easier to limit it to one device or one image, but I wanted to make it as flexible as possible. So what I'm gonna do here is just I'm gonna basically create an image or I'm sorry, create a new device here, attach a couple images to it, and then show you what that looks like, uh, what the flow looks like when it runs. So I'm just gonna click new, and I'm going to call this Surface Duo. This is the new exciting Microsoft Surface Duo. So we'll say the manufacturer is Microsoft. The device type is, it's not, really a laptop, but we'll call it a laptop for right now. Hard drive. Uh, this is looking for basically the storage capacity, so I'll, I don't know what the storage capacities are. I'm going to say 256 gigabytes. Operating system is Windows 10. Uh, the display info. Actually, I'm going to leave most of this, most of the rest of this information blank because I don't honestly know what it is. Um, but essentially, we would fill in the other details as necessary. And then all the way at the bottom, I'm going to click Add Attachments. And here I'm going to go to my Downloads folder and add in one attachment and then another attachment and click Save. And that's it. So now if I click there, there are my two image attachments. If I select those, there's the first one. There's the second one. Okay, so we know that worked. Um, now I'm going to jump over to my flow. So this is the flow in the uh, flow builder, the editor. Uh, so we can see that whenever an item is created or modified in that devices list, uh, we're going to get that device. We're going to get the, the attachments from it. Uh, so again, we're using a get items, or I'm sorry, get item. Uh, action here in Power Automate and then I'm getting the attachments from that item and then just for good measure I'm going to go to the device images library and get any existing images. Uh, this is a little bit wasteful because every time the item is modified it's going to essentially 
delete any existing images and create new ones, even if they are the same images. Um, in my mind, this was the cleanest way to handle it because I didn't want old, potentially old images left out there. Um, so essentially, this is going to return any device images from, or any images from the device images library where the device ID is equal to the ID of the item we're running this on. So pretty straightforward. Uh, and then the first thing I'm going to do is delete all of those existing image files. Uh, again, that's just a apply to each for, because this is going to get at least one, potentially more. Uh, so that's going to be within this apply to each. Delete all of those. And then if, uh, then the next thing I'm going to do is basically uh, just to standardize because I had an issue early on where someone, where, where folks were sometimes uploading them with the, you know, the, the J and JPEG was capitalized, but not the P or the G, or all, you know, PNG was all caps. So just to keep things a little more standard, I essentially took the name and use the two lower uh, formula there, uh, or expression rather, to convert that display name of the image to lowercase. So that's all that is. And then essentially if that attachment, if that display name uh, is JPEG or PNG, then we know it's an image file. If it's not one of those, then essentially nothing's going to happen. So if they were to attach, say, a PDF document or some other type of attachment to an item, it's really just going to ignore it. Now, the problem there is that the previous step where we deleted the existing image files, that sort of a, does present a case where if they were to remove all the attachments but then attach a PDF, it would delete files, the image files that we wanted, but that was sort of an acceptable risk. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to close that down yet. All right, so now if the attachment is a JPEG or PNG, we're going to get the content of it. So get the attachment content for that particular item. And again, this is all running in, inside the apply to each because it needs to run for each attachment on that item. So we're gonna get the content of it. We're going to create a file in SharePoint. Uh, so we're creating it in that device images library. And for the file name, we're using the ID number of the device. Now I didn't have to do this, uh, but I just wanted sort of a backup and wanted to enforce some kind of consistency uh, in that uh, image library, so or that document library. So I'm appending the ID number of the device in front of the uh, display name of the attachment. So whatever attachment, whatever name they use for the attachment is going to, to append. I could also have gotten fancy and said, you know, device ID dash some sequential number. So we'd have image one, image two. I wasn't too worried about that. Um, all right. And then we're basically using the file content from the attachment content step to create that file. And the last step in here is to essentially update the properties of that image to assign the device ID uh, of the item, again, the device that we're running this flow on. Uh, and then finally, the attachment content. I'm not sure why I did this. I think at, a, at the time I found that if I didn't include this, then the file was not coming up as readable. So I'll be honest, I, I created this over a year ago. So I'm revisiting now and, and I don't honestly remember why I did that, but I did. So it must've been important. Uh, so at any rate, that's what we're gonna do. Now if I go back and look at the run of this, we can see there that it completed successfully. It got the device, it got the attachments. We can see that there were two attachments. Duo one, duo two. Uh, further down here, we'll see that this loop ran twice. Uh, actually, the first, the there were no existing images files, so there was nothing to delete. That was good. 
and then the adding the attachments to the device images library happened twice which is what I expect because there were two images so now if I go back over to my site here and let me just go to site contents and go to my device images library and there is the Surface Duo image 1 Surface Duo image 2 with the device ID of 79 that's all good created six minutes ago and then the data image data URI is a multi line of text field I think um, again I don't know why I remember why this is here because there was a problem rendering the images in Power Apps and I added that in an attempt to circumvent that issue in Power Apps. Um, some point later I'll do another video on what that issue was and how I worked around it without using this column, but bottom line is that column is superfluous at this point. Now I remember why it's there. Uh, but that's basically it. So in the devices list itself we'll see that the Surface Duo still has those two items attached to it, those two images, but we also have those images in our device images library with the device ID. So now in my app for that particular device, uh, or on a sort of a, a page that displays information details of that device, I can show those two images in a gallery that's going to filter to the ID of the device. So it all comes full circle. Uh, and again, this was there. There are uh, any number of different ways to address this. Uh, this is the solution I came up with because I was essentially handing over the population of the device list and the image list to someone else, and I wanted to rather than take the time to explain to them, okay, do this, put this image here, then create the device here and get this URL and put it in that field. I wanted to make it as simple as possible. So the only thing, uh, the only list that the person maintaining this data is working with is the device list. And the images are automatically going to be saved to that other library. Uh, so that's basically what I wanted to show. Uh, as I said, I will in another video show how I added those uh, images to the uh, in a gallery in the app that I built. Uh, but that's it for today.